Meghul sir. He is going to talk to us in the back nucleus bisection technique or MSLCS. Over to you, Deepak sir, for your presentation. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, thank you for the opportunity for part uh, for allowing me to be present my uh, techniques in this meeting. Hello, hello. Yeah, uh, is my screen hello. visible here? Uh, yes, it's visible, sir. You just have to put it on the slideshow mode. Yeah, yeah. Just a second. Yeah. So yeah, I'll be. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'll be speaking on uh, the in the bag nucleus bisection techniques and uh, uh, we are all uh, always on the endeavor to refine our SISIS techniques because we are uh, we should be obsessed of seeing these post-op refractive results. I think uh, if we have consistently these post-op refractive results, then the visual outcome would be almost comparable with that of a commercialization. So we would be giving them six by six. Uh, and it is possible if we follow two basic principles. So our aim is to have uh, the outcome so that the uh, surgical induced astigmatism is very low. And uh, I'm sure that we all first agree that we need to follow these two principles uh, to do that. And these two principles are if we shift to a temporal incision and also to learn and master nucleus bisecting techniques so that uh, we can manage most of the nucleus consistently with about six or six and a half millimeter uh, incision uh, the, with the temporal incisions, uh, our uh, induced astigmatism is very, very significantly lesser. So in my study, which I have done in my uh, hands, if a properly constructed uh, incision in the temporal uh, quadrant, uh, I have never got an astigmatism of more than 0.75 diopter. It's always be 0.5 or lesser than that. And if we can follow these principles, we definitely can achieve an excellent post-op outcome. We are aware of the in the antechamber nucleus bisection techniques as has been elegantly presented by Dr. M.S. Ravindra Sir. Uh, in the bag nucleus dissection techniques, currently there are three uh, techniques, Dr. Akaoshi's pre-chopper technique, the my loop, and I'll be presenting the Dr. Khan's, using the Dr. Khan pre-chopper uh, uh, instrument. So I'll just show you a, a few videos, few cases, uh, and try to explain the basic fundamentals about uh, uh, managing uh, the cases with in the bag nucleus bisection. Uh, this video has audio. Please let me know whether the audio is available. Uh... Hi, I'm Dr. Deepak Meghur, and today I'll be sharing new technique. This is about pre-chopping. I'm trying to use Dr. Khan's pre-chopper. This is used to just pre-chop the nucleus before removing the fragments. Okay, the principle here is, you know, it is just like your horizontal phaco chop. Then using a very small vectus, uh, the fragment is removed out of the eye using the phaco sandwich technique. I'm using a Chang chopper to go under the rexus margin, hook the endonucleus properly. The pre-chopper is placed at the proximal edge of the rexus and then it is buried slightly deep inside. And then the two instruments are moved in a direction so that they come in contact with each other. Uh, this is the maneuver which results in the uh, splitting of the nucleus and we can feel a snap when it happens and i usually prefer to do just two heminucleus each of these heminucleus will be not more than four millimeter in the widest part of its diameter so it can usually come uh, in a incision about five millimeter or six millimeters i would avoid doing more fragments because Managing these fragments with all sharp edges is going to be slightly traumatic uh, to the coronal endothelium. So I don't see any much advantage of dividing them into very smaller fragments. Dividing it into two fragments is good enough for me. There are two aspects to nucleus management with this technique. One is, of course, dividing the nucleus using the pre-chopper. The second is manipulating these fragments out into the antechamber. Ideally, we would always want to have a 5 millimeter axis. Well, manipulating out can be tricky, especially if you're dealing with a very large bulky nucleus, then probably a bigger axis would be helpful. Or even in a very soft cataract, removing these soft fragments out of the bag is going to be challenging. The technique which I use is I just use this two sins cube and then one pole of the heminucleus is tipped out and then using the chopstick maneuver. Basically, we are supporting the fragment using these 
uh, two sins cubes and gently lifting it out of the bag and keeping it in the antechamber. Then using a very small vectis, uh, the fragment is removed out of the eye using the phaco sandwich technique. The chopper is slid horizontally so that the profile is horizontal now. And then in this profile, it is slid under the anti-capsule until it reaches the equator of the nucleus. And then it is rotated so that it goes in and hooks the equator of the endonucleus. So now we are sure that, you know, it is not above the capsule, it's under the capsule. And we can see the tenting about the anti-capsule just confirming this fact. Now with the second instrument, that is a pre-chopper, it is going to be placed at the proximal end just beside the rexus margin. The key thing here is that it has to be buried sufficiently deep enough. So the most important secret of achieving is a good crack without inducing any torque, especially in such dense nucleus, is that both the instruments, that is the chopper, the distal end, as well as the pre-chopper, the proximal end, they have to be engaging sufficient part of the nucleus. The Chang chopper has to engage the entire amount of the equator of the endonucleus, whereas the pre-chopper, it has to be sufficiently buried deep into the substance of the nucleus. And once we're sure that we're sufficiently deep enough, now is the time to move the instruments towards each other. And once it is done, we can see that the crack is done, but I'm not sure whether the posterior plate is also broken. So I just want to reconfirm it. I just rotate the nucleus a little bit and try to do the lateral separation using the same two instruments. I'm trying to place them inside the groove sufficiently and then try to separate them laterally so that whatever fine attachments are there holding on to each other, especially near the posterior plate, would be released. So in denser nucleus, it's obvious that you know the posterior plate could still be attached at some part and go in put in viscoelastic and I'm trying to separate them using two instruments. OVD is introduced in between the two heminucleus inside the bag. This will help the bag to be well distended and the space is being maintained. Now is the time to prolapse each of these heminucleus out of the bag and then extract them out of the eye. Using two Sinsky hooks, I'm trying to manipulate one of the heminucleus out of the bag. As I'm trying to do it, I realize that there are still some fine attachments which are ensuring that the, the other heminucleus is also trying to come out. A little bit of manipulation of the two Sinsky hooks followed by OVD injection ensures that the two heminucleus are separated. Sinsky hook and the small vectis and sandwich the fragment in between these two instruments and pull it out. The OVD is again refilled into the antechamber and the bag and then the second heminucleus is manipulated out of the bag and using the same two Sinsky hook, just holding on either side, I just pull it out. Now, this was a very automatic way of uh, removing the nucleus out of the antechamber. Since the nucleus is quite dense, it takes some effort and the process is slightly slow before I get that crack. But point to note here was the nucleus was rotating. There's a lot of torque in place. And the reason simply was that the nucleus was very dense. The degree of torque is directly proportional to the density of the nucleus. That has been my observation. And the second point also would be that pre chopper has been buried sufficiently deep into the substance of the nucleus. Maybe the torque would be slightly less. Time to assess the two heminucleus and I suspect that the posterior plate must be holding on somewhere. So I'm using viscoelastic to go in and explore and I see that the posterior plate, the central part is not totally separated. So I'm using two since cubes to just go in in the groove and then gentle lateral separation maneuvers. I could just separate the two heminucleus. So not much of a difficulty. We could divide this dense nucleus into two heminucleus and now is the time to prolapse each of them out of the bag into the antechamber and then extract them out. I'm using cohesive OVD to maintain the chamber now. Using the two sins cubes in the chopstick maneuver, I'm just grasping it at the two edge of the heminucleus and then gently manipulating it out of the bag. There's a lot of epinucleus and lens matter which hampers the visualization. So that's one thing which we need to be conscious of. Using a little bit of viscoelastic to just flush it away helps us to see again well. To be on the safer side, I'm just trying to enlarge the incision just a little bit. 
So again, under the cover of cohesive OVD, uh, using the FACO sandwich technique, that is using the vectors in the dialer, heminucleus is gently brought out. The care has to be taken that the cut surface of the heminucleus should not touch the endothelium. That is the, the roughest part of the heminucleus. So that is what is going to traumatize the endothelium. So we need to be conscious that the dialer presses the heminucleus down so that the rough part of the heminucleus is away from the coil endothelium. Similarly, the second heminucleus is manipulated out of the bag, and again using the similar technique of FACO sandwich, it's expressed out. Uh, thank you so much for your attention.